Hey, <clears throat> welcome back to the channel. Uh, finally, we're moving on with the um, uh, case collector series I've been doing. Uh, got three of them, <clears throat> and uh, you can check those out in the, the playlist for um, case collecting. Uh, but these are specifically uh, for collectors, collecting hints, type things that you look for in case knives. Uh, what's special about the different years, uh, information that has to do with mainly uh, collecting uh, these case knives. And so uh, today we are doing that era from 1940 to 1964, the case XX uh, era. And so we'll be talking about specific collecting uh, tips um, for those knives. And so, uh, without further ado, I uh, hope you check out the channel. It's going to be an interesting uh, video. I'm going to try to make it shorter than the other ones. <laughs> That's a fart. Can you do a billy goat? <laughs> no, you're spraying it. Say it, don't spray it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good billy goat. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the fortified castle hi all my viewers i'm so glad to get back making videos i think it's been five days since i made a video and um just want to welcome you to the channel if you are just skimming and found my channel by accident and you're a traditional knife guy i've got plenty of content you're gonna love it but all these guys up here also have uh traditional knife content Patty's Taylor Peeler, Singing Toad, Knife Delights, Old Farts Knives, Splitting size, uh, Slices, Tim's School of Fish, he's just infamous, um, Baxter's Blades, The Tired Tiger, but he's really not tired when it comes to uh, talking about traditional knives, Randy's WSG, and Travis the Knife Guy. Of course, there's many, many others. But uh, if you're just found my channel, there's a lot of different uh, traditional content. You can look at these guys up and find it. All right. So um, we are talking about um, knives with this marking on it. That's the tang stamp of the Case XX knives. They use this tang stamp from um, 1940 all the way up to 1964 beautiful little red bone um, model 07 uh, this is how case used to make these knives um, today they call it the uh, mini trapper but they used to have a pin blade and a clip blade on them these were great little dog leg uh, uh, type edc knives uh, anyhow so uh, where do we want to go from here all right, so uh, this knife right here, uh, this uh, tang stamp change comes on the eve of World War II uh, for the United States. It started in 1941, but uh, the United States made knives for other countries uh, also during World War II. This is one right here. It was um, made by Case, and that's how you can tell the XS right there, it's MSLTD XX. So this is a tank stamp that is not a wartime tank stamp. It was probably 1946 to 49, if I remember right. Um, but this is a knife, nevertheless, made for Canada. Pretty cool. These are big brutes that were meant for use in the Navy. And... Um, Case didn't make this model during wartime, has a little different tang stamp. Uh, so uh, World War II was a little different for Case than it was for um, uh, uh, World War I. And Case produced a lot of knives for the um, United States Military Service. Uh, started using this... Uh, what's uh case employees called gum buddy um it's 
rough black it has a, a very uh, Rogers bone type texture to it very aggressive there was no pattern in this it just varied tremendously um, and then when uh, you slicken that out it was called slick black same type of material came about in 1940 and um, that uh, rough rough bl black slick black was called Plastag by uh, Case, and it ran up to uh, 1950. So these knives, even though they could be dated all the way up to 64, they would be uh, dated up to around 1950 because of the, the type of material used in it. And, you know, recently Case brought back the, uh, the uh, gum buddy for uh, collectors. But um, when you're talking about these Case XXs, the slick black was used. This was slick black was used from 1920 up to 1970, 1920 to 1970, and the uh, rough black was used up to 1950. And uh, so that's how you date those. <clears throat> we have talked about in previous videos. I don't want to go there yet. Hold on. Uh, I want to finish off World War II. So, um, Case made TL-29s. Um, they also made an engineer's knife that was um, uh, like an easy open knife. Looked like the Camilla CV easy open knife. Um, they made that for them. Um, the MS, uh, the M3 trench knife. I think Case was pretty much the major supplier of M3 uh, trench knives. That was their big contribution uh, to the military in World War II. Also, the B44 survival knife. Uh, it's a knife popularized by uh, Marine Raiders. And, um, you know, looks a lot like a W49 from Western. Um, they also produced the uh, stiletto knife. There aren't. A lot of examples of those running around uh, they're pretty pretty highly collectible and so um, that that'll wrap up World War II so um, after World War II Case uh, is in pretty good position to um, expand and become a great knife manufacturer. They have a lot of really good relationships with Cataraugus, Western Knife Company, pretty much all the Little Valley uh, companies, as well as, uh, you know, K-Bar, um, and also uh, Burl Cutlery. They, they've uh, started making uh, full lines of uh, kitchen cutlery, and so um, Case has just taken off. But like most... Uh, companies in um, that era you know they had uh, cut back a lot of their uh, patterns so you see a lot of um, patterns and knives just um, um, uh, you know discontinued but even so there's an amazing number of, of case patterns dating you know from the 40s and um, and so they continued, like most companies, to cut patterns as time went on. So from 1940 to 1964, they were still dropping patterns. I don't want to say yearly, but uh, periodically they just quit make, making uh, certain patterns. And um, so that's you're going to see that in, in the collecting experience uh, when you start looking at these older knives to try to collect, you know, patterns that that case produced. Um, they look quite a bit different than modern knives, too. And so these knives are still mostly um, handmade with uh, minimal machinery uh, use. And it, it's really in the probably the 60s before more and more uh, machines are being used and they're trying to produce these knives with less and less hands-on um the really really i think the best years of of case knives are from 1940 up to 1964 and um so that's pretty cool um 
rough black i think we already mentioned that you use that up to 1950 slick black from 1920 all the way up to 1970 um, they use roger's bone uh, we, we've talked about that before <clears throat> roger's bone was was a type of bone when you look at this case right here this is your typical uh, uh corn cob uh, actually a peach tree peach seed jig in that, that case used right here and you know uh, they they had a few different variations of uh jigging that they used the um rogers bone is much more aggressive when you look at the jigging on this uh knife much more aggressive than um you know regular jigging was and that's how you can tell it now after uh, world war ii uh, rogers bone wasn't quite as deep and aggressive you know like this uh, gum fuddy is kind of a rogers bone type uh, imitation and it, it just kind of uh, i guess a way to describe it is the thickness of the bone got less after world war ii and so um they're not quite as uh deep and aggressive as they were prior to world war ii but um they still use roger bone um all the way up to 1964. So um, they use winter bottom bone. Uh, also, I don't have an example of that to uh, show you. When we think of winter bottom bone, we think of the long, uh, straight grooves. But winter bottom um, was a company like Rogers that produced a variety of patterns of bone. And so... Um, you know, winter bottom bone is just bone that they purchase from winter bottom. Um, not necessarily those long, deep, uh, horizontal grooves in them. Um, there's also a number of collectible knives that you might look at, like Kloss Cutlery, um, that uh, Case produced knives for. Um, they produce knives for uh, Parker. Um, uh, and also frost cutlery, Smoky Mountain Knife Works, the NC, NKCA Club Knives, NASCAR Knives, a, a bunch of different uh, knives that were produced. Um, but mainly, it was their um, straight line knives, you know, the, the 150 so different patterns that they produced. Um, up till 1964 and uh, a lot of that collector stuff with Parker Frost Smoky Mountain Knife Works that happened later after 1964 probably around 1972 I think case started getting into the collector market in a big way okay so if you're just happening upon this video uh, about case collecting. There are three other videos in this series. The uh, early case years, um, we talk about um, all the cases, Case Brothers, um, uh, Ken Folks, um, uh, Standard Knife Company, all the different companies of case. The second uh, one is, is the, um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, that was the early years. And uh, we talked about counterfeiting in that video. Uh, the next video was case tested XX. And in that video, we went in detail on their uh, pattern numbers. In this video, I'll just mention that. Um, I don't know. Yeah, you can just barely see the uh, number right there. It's a 6207. The case moved the numbers to the back of the tang in 1949. So that's another way to date your uh, your um, uh, case knives. Also, um, when that at in nineteen forty nine, they're basically have a hundred percent stamping of their um, pattern number. So up until that date, knives could not you can, you can find knives that aren't stamped and it's not that it didn't have a pattern number it's just they didn't weren't consistent in stamping their knives so that all becomes standardized in 1949 and they move the stamping from other blades to the back of the tang 
on the uh, main blade on their knives. There's also uh, a few different um, case stampins during this period. So as we mentioned uh, on, on uh, this knife right here, you have the LTD markings for the Canadian knives. Um, they use a, that case stainless. I'm putting a picture up there for you right now from 1947 to 52. They use a cases tested XX from 1940 to 1950. Um, they um, used a case XX stainless from 1950 to 1964. And so those are uh, not, not quite as many different um, uh, tank stamps as... Uh, you know, in the um, tested XX period. But, you know, they used a, a few different ones. It's just that this was the main one that you're going to find. And so, um, you know, if you're collecting these knives, though, you need to know that those other um, tank stamp markings, because you may find them on a knife and think they're counterfeited or a Frankenstein knife when actually, you know, they belong in the knife. And again, you know, you want to get a a good collector book if you're going to collect these. And um, I'm always, uh, I just got a knife in the mail, an old case. And before I um, bought that knife, I look the knife over extensively in the pictures to make sure it seems consistent with the way the knife is supposed to look. And then I look it up in my collector book. And so... Um, that way it's easier for me to verify and when you look at these uh case knives you'll notice you know there's different uh blade geometries and so when you look these up in a collector book you can see these blade geometries and in the uh collector books and then you you can tell you know whether this is a knife that is consistent with what the blade was supposed to be on the knife and uh, that's why it's so important to have a good collector book if you're going to collect these knives because they tend to be a lot more expensive. So these things can, can run to hundreds of dollars uh, collecting old case knives like this. And um, they're pretty cool, though. Um, I'm trying to build a complete collection of case knives after not collecting case knives for years and years. All of a sudden, you know, I'm buying a lot of them. So um, that is pretty much all there is to it for collecting XX knives. You know, 1949, they moved the uh, tank stamp and they have uh, continuous dating. Um, uh, I don't think I mentioned the green bone. So we talked about that in the tested XX uh, video. But that green bone uh, ran up until 1955. So if you're seeing knives saying green bone and, and um, they're not XX knives, then, uh, you know, it's not green bone. So uh, the red bone ran up to 1964. So if you're seeing knives with a different tank stamp than XX or, or a tested XX, it's not the red bone that we're talking about uh, with collecting. And last video, we talked about that too. I mean, uh, you know, a collector would not consider this red bone. It is obviously red bone. So um, I think there's a lot to do about nothing with the red bone. And um, that's just my opinion though. So I hope you enjoyed the video hope you found it informative i hope you check out my next video and my last video and i hope you check out all of these guys channels because they got some great channels um just uh good content on all these channels so uh thanks again i really appreciate y'all for supporting the channel and i'll see you in the next one